Chemistry lecture number 68, Boyle's Law and Charles' Law. Boyle's Law predicts that if a balloon filled with gas is taken to the top of a mountain, the balloon will swell because the atmospheric pressure is lower. We can use a formula to mathematically predict the new volume of a balloon or gas when the pressure changes. So if I have a balloon and I carry it up a mountain, this balloon will swell and start to get bigger and bigger because the air at the top of a mountain is thinner. There's less atmospheric pressure surrounding it. And we can use a formula to predict how much the balloon would swell if we carried this up a mountain. Here's our formula. Boyle's Law formula is... P1 V1 equals P2 V2. So P1 is the initial pressure of the gas, and V1 is the initial volume of the gas, or the initial size of the balloon. P2 is the new pressure of the gas, and V2 is the new volume of the gas. And I think I should point out that when we talk about what is the pressure of the gas, you know, if we have a gas, uh, the pressure uh, of the gas is the pressure inside the balloon. And the pressure inside the balloon matches the atmospheric pressure pushing outside the balloon. So whatever the pressure is inside the balloon, that's the same as the atmospheric pressure pushing around the balloon. All right. So let's try a problem. A gas has a volume of 242 milliliters and a pressure of uh, 87.6 kilopascals. So the balloon is this size and this is how much air pressure is in the balloon. Uh, what is its volume at standard atmospheric pressure, 101 kilopascals? So uh, we're saying now that what's happening is that this is going to be the new pressure inside the balloon and we want to know what happens to the volume. Okay, so the initial pressure 87.6 is P1, and the initial size of the balloon is uh, 242 milliliters. And then what happens is um, somehow the pressure in the balloon changes to 101 kilopascals, and we want to know what's happened to the volume. Um, and I guess we, we could say that uh, the balloon is taken to uh, an area where there's more atmospheric pressure surrounding it. So we can predict that the uh, balloon is going to get squashed if the pressure surrounding it and therefore the pressure inside the balloon uh, gets bigger. Anyway, our uh, formula is P1V1 equals P2V2. The initial pressure is 87.6. The initial volume is 242. And then the new pressure is going to be 101 right there. And we're going to solve for the uh, volume. And what I like to do is I like to write the numbers with the units and then rewrite it without the units because I get confused when I try to solve it uh, with the units in place. All right, anyway, 87.6 times 242 equals 101 times V2. So it uh, looks like this times this divided by 101 uh, kilopascals, which is what we have down here. So if you solve this expression, you'll get 209.893, and in high school chemistry, we round to three significant digits. So this is going to be uh, 2.10 times 10 to the 2 milliliters, or, you know, something close to 210. Now, does this answer make sense? Boyle's Law says that when a gas is placed under increasing pressure, it's going to shrink. So it starts at a volume of 242. The pressure increases. We predict a volume less than 242, and... 210 is less than 242. So the answer makes sense. All right. So that's how you solve that one. Okay. Now, it doesn't matter what units of pressure we use. Uh, we could have used millimeters of mercury, uh, atmospheres, or kilopascals. Also, the units of volume could have also been in liters, gallons, or milliliters. So in this formula, uh, the pressure units don't matter. If they give you the pressure in atmospheres, that's okay. If they give you the pressure in millimeters of mercury, that's all right. If they give you the volume in liters or gallons, that's okay. As long as you're consistent between them. If this one is in atmospheres, then this pressure has to be in atmospheres. If this volume is in liters, then this volume has to be in liters. So the units don't matter as long as you're consistent between the before and the after. Okay, so, uh, so let me just repeat that. It doesn't matter what units of pressure we use. We could have used millimeters of mercury, atmosphere, or kilopascals, and the units of volume could have also been liters, gallons, milliliters, etc. Now, Charles' law predicts that the volume of a gas will increase if its temperature increases. And we can use a formula to predict the new volume of a gas when its temperature changes. And here's the Charles Law formula. 
v1 over t1 equals v2 over t2. So v1 is the initial volume of the gas. T1 is the initial temperature of the gas in kelvins. All right. And then v2 is the new volume of the gas. And t2 is the new temperature of the gas in kelvins. So for Charles' law formula, the temperature has to be in kelvins. Volume units don't matter, but temperature has to be in uh, kelvins. So uh, notice that in order for this formula to work, the temperature must be in kelvins. Any type of unit can be used for volume. Let's try a problem. A 234 milliliter volume of gas is heated from 50 degrees Celsius to 100 degrees Celsius. What's the new volume? Now, you might be tricked into thinking that since the temperature doubles from 50 degrees Celsius to 100 degrees Celsius, that the volume will also double. Uh, but Celsius is not an accurate measure of the kinetic energy of the gas. We need to convert the temperature to Kelvin. I mean, if it went from 50 Kelvin to 100 Kelvin, yeah, then we could say the uh, volume doubles. But unfortunately, these are in Celsius. We have to convert these into Kelvin. So the way to convert uh, Celsius into Kelvin is K equals C plus 273. C represents the Celsius temperature. So 50 plus 273 is 323 Kelvin. So in a sense, the initial temperature is 323 Kelvin. And then 100 degrees Celsius, all right, 100 plus 273 is 373 Kelvin. So that's the new temperature. So 373 Kelvin, all right? This is the initial volume, 234. That's what we started with before we heated the gas or the balloon. All right. And we're trying to find out what the new volume is after we heat our gas. All right. So V1 over T1 equals V2 over T2. The initial volume is 234. The initial temperature is 323. The new volume, well, that's what we're going to solve for. And the new temperature, it was heated to 373, so that goes there. So what you do is that you cross multiply to solve for this. I'm gonna rewrite this without the uh, units. 234 over 323, let me get a new pen, equals V2 over 373. Three. So you cross multiply 234 times 373. I wrote that right here. Well, I could just sort of rewrite this. This times this. 234 times 373 equals 323 times V2. All right. And then to get V2 by itself, we divide both sides by 323. That cancels, and you end up with that. All right. So, 234 times 373 divided by 323. That gives us 270.229, and to three significant digits, that's going to be 2.70 times 10 to the 2 milliliters. Now, does our answer make sense? Um, We've increased the temperature from 323 to 373, so we predict that the volume will increase. 234 and then the volume changes to about 270. So yeah, the answer makes sense. 270 is bigger than 234. For a PDF transcript of this lecture, go to www.richardlouis.com. This has been chemistry lecture number 68, Boyle's Law and Charles' Law.